Now it's time to take a look at the sphere. Now, you could draw it in a box. It is really affected by perspective. If you do cross sections of it around the equator of the Earth, if you sh sometimes it's shown um, as if we're looking down upon it, and you can see the equator as uh, an ellipse below eye level, and it, that would be affected by perspective. But we're going to take a little bit simpler view of it and get some practice with our thirds, our measure of thirds, and make our X, first thing always to do. And we're looking straight at this, so we don't have to worry about a vanishing point yet. Perspective drawing, though, is a lot about this sort of thing. You have some rules, but you also have to do a lot of estimating by eye. That's why I'm always advocating that you do some sketching from life. That's really the only way to train your eye to estimate sizes, estimate scale. And this is relative scale. So once I'm happy with one third, I could bring it over and use it for the rest. So it's always helpful to think ahead. But I know that, oddly enough, from not drawing from grids or anything else, but from life, drawing from life, you figure it out as you are observing something. So I already know that our circle touches in these places. So it's just a matter now of rounding out our form and think round. That's gonna help a lot. Round, round, round. So, and you can, so I think maybe I didn't go far enough, so be willing to change your mind. If you're looking at this and it's not looking round, maybe I didn't go quite far enough this way. I can't get too close to this or my big head will be in the way. So I'm, I think I've, I was off a little bit there, but, but you get the idea. That's how you do it. You use your method of thirds. And then it's time now to put in our shadow. And what we're anticipating is an ellipse in perspective on the surface. So what we have to do is make a box, an equal sided box underneath the circle and draw this same diagram, but only in perspective. So the way to start, of course, is to give yourself a vanishing point for the light to one side in front and above. If let's go right from here and get our light this way. That way it'll keep it from going off the page too much. So just select the spot directly from one of these X's. I think it'll give us a 45 degree. So let's just ignore that one. And so we've got one side already of our projection. From this corner, we're projecting back. We don't know how far, so just go. And from this corner, we'll project back. So we're projecting the box, not the circle, but the box. So you may have to keep a piece of paper beside your big drawing in order for you to be able to go outside a little bit. So I've gone outside my paper a little bit. And I'm going to cut this off with a straight line. And I'm using a straight line because this is a straight line. So.
Now, within this box that begins at the bottom of the circle, I have to do this same diagram of thirds and I'm anticipating an ellipse like our flat circles at the bottom of our cylinder and the top of our cylinder and the bottom of our cone. I'm anticipating that. So the way to get there is the same way we got there. So try to find some colors I haven't used. So first thing is an X all the way out there. Now you have to keep an eye on this because already we have so many lines. So just keep an eye on it. So here's the center. So you know what to do with the center. You have to make a line across. Once you have the center, you know you have to make a line using the vanishing point. Go outside if that helps. It might have helped to go outside. Yeah. All right, so now I've got a diagonal from here to here that I have to divide into three. And I've got a diagonal from here to here that I have to divide into three. And one from here to here that I have to divide into three, which is crazy looking. And I've got from here to here. Okay, and now I have to draw around. So. I think I'll use my, better use a dark one. So I'll start here, because it touches here, and here, and here, and here. So my circle's gonna touch there, there, and there. So think round, remember that's what's gonna help you, is thinking round. And also thinking that you're not gonna fill up this space here. You've gotta leave a little bit of a air, leave a little air there. So I re already I see it happening, it's happening. So there to there. And from here, this is the crazy one now, because this has to come from here around here and back this way and that's it so it's there and it's there and it comes down here so the actual shadow is here and here. So it's underneath and a little bit behind, just like we would anticipate it to be. And very dark, closest to the circle. Now again, you're gonna be more careful with your cross etching, but this is just to give you a quick idea. So. Again, we used 
three and a half inches square for the elevation of our boxes, our squares, and we used four and a half by four and a half for our circle. Because so much of the box is, is left out, the circle tends to look too small in relation to everything else if we don't do it in a bigger box. Now, our shading relies on a half moon idea. So, we have to show that the circle is, the elli this ellipse, this circle is rolling back. So we've got a little bit of cross hatching here, just to show that that's moving back. But we have a lot of shadow on this side because the light can no longer wrap around the form. The shadows on the objects are called form shadows and the shadows cast by the objects are obviously called cast shadows. So we have to make, try to make this as round as we can. So your cross etching has to follow the form a little bit in this case. And then you can always go back and make it more linear rather than more curved afterward. But get your shape first and then worry about the shading afterward. Now the core dark in this case is going to be right here where the shadow begins. Because reflected light is going to end up all along here. So we've got to work very hard to make this the darkest part. And I think that sometimes if you start there, you'll know how dark to make the rest of it. So if this has to be the darkest, you'll know how to make the rest of it lighter, what you have to do. And of course, this is all in light, so we're not messing with that at all. We're just working on this part. And I'm not taking my time or being very patient with this, but you will be.